Hello and welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Ormark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And today we're going to do something a little different. We are looking at the scalloped contour dies, which are a selection of dies, which, oh, I've got those the wrong way around. Let me just turn them over. Right, they're a selection of dies that um, go with the colour and contour stamp zest. These will cut those out. They've got the scalloped one, which we used for the C before. And then they've got these different coordinating dies. So you've got various different sort of scallops in there. And then these two, the largest one and the smallest one, will cut them out with sort of circles, um, little scallops in there. So we're using this one. And I have cut it out. Let me bring them out um okay so i've cut one out in um, basic white and i've cut one out in because that shows a little bit more of the beautiful scallops in the polished pink and we are going to do something which is an, a very old-fashioned style of um embroidery art but you can use our twine if you want to although you will use rather a lot so let me show you one that's completed. I've just got to put it on. And you can see you've got this um, concentric pattern that runs right the way through and gives you enough space to put um, a sentiment in the centre. And I've done another one just so that it shows a little better. And this one I've done in blue and you can see it runs, it literally works itself round and will come almost into a, not quite a circle, more of a um, diamond shape, but looks absolutely beautiful. So I thought I would show you how to do this. Now, I expect some of you probably already know how to do it, but if you don't, this is what you need. Um, you will need a pair of, um, scissors for cutting your um, threads. You will need um, some sellotape or um, what do we call them, um, scotch tape. And you will need some coloured thread. Now, I'm going to show you this. This has been in, used to belong to my mother. My mother was a an avid embroiderer. And if I turn around and open this, I can't even get it all out because it goes right the way along there and right the way along there. And it's a complete rainbow of coloured threads. So I need to decide what colour I'm going to do this one in. And I thought I really like this, which is um, mint macaron. And so I thought I would find some thread which is, now have I got, I'm going to need at least one skein, if not two. And I think I might only have one in that colour. Um, that would work, actually. I've only got one of that, and I don't think that's going to be enough. So let me just have a little rummage through and see what other... I've got a few of these because we will need, that's not the same as that one. Let's have a look at that and see if that, is that the same? It's not quite, is it? I've got a couple of these ones, so I'm going to go for this green because I quite like the green. So I'm using two skeins and that will work, I think. It doesn't need to be exact. I just thought I might try. So I'm just going to wrap this up. As I say, it is, it's very ancient, but any of you who are embroiderers will appreciate that this has been, um, as I say, around in my family for probably maybe 60 odd years so anyway we've got two skeins um we'll probably use one and a bit and we're going to use the white one you then need to have a large sized um needle so let me have a look through and see what 
needles I've got that will work okay so this is almost like a bodkin um, but any sort of large needle that you've got and then we're just going to take see if that will take it from there yes it will so you need to have as long a piece as you can because we are going to be using quite a lot of this so it's very easy with this because it's got a very wide top and it's got a blunt end which is good so you know any needle that you've got and then this is the important thing we are going to go through the top edge here down to the first one there okay so if you hold it on this line you're going to go up on this one and we're going to take it up as far as we can that's safe and this is where I'm just going to attach just a little bit of sellotape just in on the top so let me just put a little bit of sellotape in on here so that that is put it down like that so that's quite secure on there okay it's the easiest way of doing it so we're in the top corner and we're going to take it down to the first one here and you go in okay then you're going to take it up to the second one down on the side so we're going down the left hand side so we're going to go up I'm hoping you can see yes you can see on here so we're going to go up on there and you need to pull it as reasonably tight so I tend to sort of hold it and then we're going to go down into the next one so we're going to go down into the next one there hold that one and we're going to go up into the third one down and pull it up I'm trying to do it so you can see it so my hand isn't in the way so up and then just pull it reasonably tight not overly tight and then we're going to go down into the next one so we're literally going across hole on hole so let's go up into the next one bring it up just tighten it down and take it down into the next so you're going along and you always go down into the hole and then up through on this one hold it tight and then down into the next one okay now we're going to be just finished on that one so when you finish the easiest part is to get your next bit of skein I'm going to try and make this a little bit longer this time cut it off and we're going to take this and attach it through onto here so we need to do a double knot fairly far down because you don't want it to come through onto the next piece but rather than having lots of tape all over the place the easiest thing is to just attach it and I can make sure that that's not going to come where we want and we can take that just little extra piece off on here move that out of the way okay so I now need to re-thread and this is why it is easy to do it with a very fat needle because then I'm not sitting around trying to work out where I'm going okay so we were let's take it back down so we're down onto this bottom one here so we're going to go up into the next one and bring it up 
oh that almost came too high I'm just going to have to catch it down on there so it doesn't come across in on to the next one and up into this one and down into the next one okay so when you've got all the way down to the bottom here you're literally just going to carry on working round so I'm going to take this one up through here And this is going to go to the bottom so it's always in the hole and then up and down onto that hole but this used to be done many many years ago it was called it was victorian art and what they would do was have little cards with holes in for young girls to learn about embroidery and embroidery stitches and then the patterns started coming from there and it's something that's I remember doing this sort of thing at school, not with embroidery, but with um, pen and pencil and graph paper. So if you took a piece of graph paper, you would um, draw your circle from the top and then work your way around and then you would colour alternate squares in black and white to give the different art and um, my eldest son when he became a teenager wanted his bedroom done like this and he actually did the whole of his bedroom in or part of it with the door and things like that in black and white and then you would colour in each one of the little squares and um, so I've been doing this for a long time and I just looked at this and thought, you know what, I'm sure it would work really well with this and give a different type of um, card because, you know, a lot of, well, quite a few of my um, fellow crafters that I send cards and things to are knitters and embroiderers and and you could do it quite easily with wool um you know different wool would work um string you could make quite a a natural looking one with uh, with hessian or or you know natural garden string um you know you can use anything that'll fit through the hole as long as it goes through the hole it will fit now as i say i'm doing it with the embroidery only because as you can see I've got lots and lots of it and I will never in my lifetime use all of the embroidery thread that's there and the younger generation so my grandchildren aren't really um, into that sort of thing really so right where were we we were down on this one so i still need to make sure that i'm up where i am so down on there and we need to come now into the next so we're going to work our way round into this hole so this is coming through on the second hole and we're going to go up into the next one so it, it, it's quite a simple process as long as you remember to go into each hole as you go down it will work so that one comes in there and then you can see you just need to make sure you don't miss out a hole so this is the next hole on here and we're going to go up into this one 
Um, so yes, yeah, so my um, my grandchildren aren't, although one of them is enjoying um, doing some sewing, she's not, um, uh, and she does a little bit of knitting, most of them aren't into the crafts like we were brought up doing. You know, I was brought up knowing how to sew and mend and do all of those things. You know, my mother used to mend and darn socks. Um, you know, if you if you turn around and say to the younger generation about darning socks, they um, they look at you as if you're um, as if you're a little bit um, a little bit mad. So you know, I um, I do tend to try and keep some of these traditions alive. And this would actually work really well for you know younger people to have a go at because. You know, you can do it, as I say, in, in whatever um, whatever thread you want. You know, you can do multicoloured. You could do it in gold. You could do it in um, silver. You could do it in, as I say, whatever colour you want. So I don't know whether that's going to come. No, it's not. So take it down to there. Turn it over on the other side again and let's just i'm going to take some of this off i don't need all of that and take the next piece but as i say you will need at least a skein um of the embroidery silk um i think for me it's it's a skein and a length um on the ones that i've done so far so you know it, it's really down to um you to sort of work out um what that length is i don't know what it is in yards it, it's you know you do need quite a bit because obviously it goes through on the front and on the back so you know you need to make sure that you've got um enough to go all the way around and you can see your back even though it's not as neat my mother would always and my grandmother would turn around and say that the back of your work should be as neat as the front so and I don't really keep it as neat as the front and this is where you have to remember where you are so with me chatting I need to see so that came up through there that came down through that one so we need to take it the next one's going to be in this one so um, we need to come up in on this one And make sure that I've got my thread all the way up. And we're going to come down in onto the, so we've done that one, into this one. And you can see quite easily as you work where you've gone to. So you just literally keep working around. So we now need to come into this corner. And then we'll work down into the other side. So that needs to come down onto here. But it's quite, it's something that it, I don't know. I, I enjoy this sort of, of, of thing. And, you know, I do a little bit of embroidery. But I thought, you know, what a fun idea to put it onto a card. And I was playing around with sort of, you know, wrapping things and, and, you know, one of them has got, um, one of the dies got a slot through it where you can put ribbon. And I thought, oh, yes, that's quite nice. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if we can do something that's, you know, a little bit different. So that's why I thought of this. And although, as I say, you can, hopefully you're watching each sort of step that I'm doing. It is literally just working one piece down onto the other and making sure that you go um, round sort of consecutively it's not difficult to do um, you know you you need to remember where you've come up and where you've gone down so that you keep it consecutive um, because otherwise your pattern won't go particularly straight but you don't have to be um, 
you know, a great sewer. Um, but I think it would be quite fun in, as I say, different types of thread. I, I quite like embroidery thread because it um, has that sort of slight shine to it. Um, the new gold and silver twine would work um, quite well. Although in reality, you know, you would use quite a lot, so it wouldn't be a um, an inexpensive thing to do. However, you know, a piece of wool, um, or as I say, gardening twine, or, or anything really that you've got. So now I have to, when or, whenever I start, if I can't remember where I am, what I do is, so this is the last piece. And if I just move this up a little bit, I can see I'm in that hole there. So I need to come down to this one and I'm down at the bottom there. So I need to come up in this one. And that's the easiest way to see where you're, where you're going to the next one. Okay, so we're gonna come down to this one. And we're about half or so way through so let's come up here into the next one but yes I wonder how many of uh, um, of you that watch me regularly do um, have done different types of craft over the years um, I enjoyed making um, doing some crochet um, I've done a little bit of felting, but not a lot. Um, you know, you can make felted animals and things, which is great fun. Um, knitting, um, I'm reasonably good at knitting, although I'm not, um, I'm not at the standard to do really complicated cable and, and things like that. You know, some of my friends, my goodness, the stuff that they can do is, is quite incredible, but um, I'm not, um, I'm not, that good at doing that sort of stuff um but i can knit a you know in in again something that we don't tend to have anymore but in the going back everybody used to knit when there was a new baby in the family you'd always knit the matinee jackets and things and um again you know the youngsters it, it's they don't even seem to wear matinee jackets it's all into um what you call it um baby grows and things so um we don't have much of that um but um you know i've knitted um i suppose i suppose it it's you know i've i've knitted dolly's clothes and things like that because you know that's um, always been quite popular but um i say a lot of it really isn't um isn't carried forward it's funny traditions how they don't um, how they don't last um, you know new technology has come and everything is has changed so much that we just don't have the um, the things that we used to have um, and it's one of those funny things I was um, showing my grandchildren you know some things that they absolutely have no idea about at all and um, one of the things was um, you know telephones so we used to have and I expect you know most of you did had um, dial phones so you know you pick up the um, the handset and then you would dial the number and it would be on a rotating dial and um, and then you'd wait to be connected and um, you know my grandchildren were like really what's an earth don't do that you know you 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 dial phones and things and uh, that doesn't happen um, so right I'm just going to stop for a second chit chatting and just work out where I am so that was in there that was down on there 
so the next one has to come in there okay so as I say you can always see when you stop uh, stop to you know add some more thread or do something you can see where you've been because it's fairly straightforward okay so then we just work down onto the next one um yes yeah, so the other thing was um cassette recorders now most you know most cars most um Well, most of us would have cassette recorders and would have Walkmans, um, you know, and you'd, you'd play your music through your Walkman and it was a cassette thing. And, and if you wanted to rewind it, you had to press a button for it to rewind all the way. Or there was a little gadget that you put in it and you turned it round and... Um, it would it would re rewind the the cassette recorder and again you know the youngsters these days or my grandchildren um have no idea what a cassette recorder is and even stranger cd's are completely um virtually obsolete now because everybody streams their music um so it is it's fascinating how technology moves through the times. And I've always turned around and said it is, you know, if anybody said to me that I would be doing YouTube videos um, and sharing my craft online, I would have turned around and gone, you know, you've got to be absolutely mad. I couldn't do anything like that. And here I am, you know, I don't have all the huge fangly stuff and and all the split screens and all of those sorts of things and and there's so much that I I can do um which is straightforward for me but um you know things are things move at such a pace that it is um, it's always fascinating to see how how technology has moved on um I remember, and I don't know <clears throat> how many of you remember, you know, when I was, oh, I don't know, I suppose 11, 12, something like that, staying up late at night in my pyjamas and being allowed to stay up and watch the landing on the moon. And it was quite astonishing because, you know, you were, you were watching something and I couldn't understand what they were saying because... It was it was just a bit too um, like a TARDIS, and uh, my father was having to tell me and my brother what they were saying. But it's something that stuck with me for forever, and it is one of those things that oh I don't think I'm gonna. This is the last one, so I've got that corner. Am I gonna have enough to go right down to? Not quite, not quite. So I've literally just, I'm stopping here. So yes, yeah, so we watch the um, um, the landing on the moon. And yes, you can see what I mean. So that was a full skein. And it's a skein and one length. Um, so you can work that out on. In fact, I can probably see how much is on here. Um, does it tell me how many yards? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just tells me the colour on there. I think they're a, a, a standard length. And I don't know because these are obviously quite old. Um, you know, they're not new. Stones, so they could be, um, you know, a lot older than they might do them in different lengths. Now they probably do them in. Um, I don't know. Um, you'll just have to practice on one and see or do one and see how much it takes um, you know do it with some old wool or something to start off with so you can just see how much you're going to need but um, as I say for me it takes a skein and a bit so yes yeah, so technology and things and and the things that we will remember are quite extraordinary 
Right, okay, so we're now almost down on to the last one. So if I just work this one out again, so that's in on here and I can see that that comes to there. So I need two, that came out. So I need this one to go up into the top one here. And it's going to come down to the bottom one in the corner. Oops. Right. And then we can take it. So I've taken it on that. That corner is a bit of a, um, a, a rectangle so that you can have it on one side and the other. So, and then we can take it back over. So I didn't use the whole of that. I'm going to keep it fairly taut. Just take a little bit of tape. I've got it attached to my desk because you know what tape's like for going everywhere or sticking to itself and you can never unravel it. I thought, right, at least I'd put it on there. So we're going to pull this just to there. Put this on that way so it can go over the top and hold it reasonably tight and then we can just take that there and as I say you can just make sure that your scraggly ends and things are, uh, are, are done and over but you can see you've got this I just need to tuck that one in like that so that piece is that was where we had our little knots. You can tuck them in underneath so that they're not going to show. But there you are. You have your pattern that runs completely round in your circle. And as I say, looks really rather good with all of the different strands. So, you know, then all you need to do is to get a piece of cardstock. I haven't even folded this one, but just as an example, probably won't put it on that one because it is a bit green and it sort of contrasts. Um, but I did have, what was the one I was going to put it on, says me. I did have a pinky one somewhere. No, I didn't. I have the green, the other green, which I'd put, have I put it? It was a, a sky sort of, anyway. Um, you can put them on there and then again, you can put whatever sentiment you want. So you can have a circular sentiment, this one. I've just put um, the ones from the same. So this was done with um, Don't Grow Up, It's a Trap. Because again, I thought that that was quite amusing. There's me doing this really old style of um, stitching. And uh, um, Don't Grow Up, It's a Trap. Um, but yes, you can, you can put whatever you want in the centre. Doesn't need to be decorated very much because you've got all of this going on. But I thought it was a fun idea. And if you've never seen it, then... Um, it's something different for you. So thank you so much for watching me. As always, please stay safe and well and be kind. Bye-bye.